piece that was purchased by the National Gallery is titled Augury. It's a five by six foot painting. It's acrylic on canvas. And with all of my works, the attempt and, and goal is always to combine various visual contradictions into one imaginary space. So I'm doing that through my use of, of line, form, texture, color, and, and bringing them together in a way that perhaps they compete a little bit within the canvas. I'm interested in creating these visual contrasts through a negotiation of oppositions. So I'm interested in, say, chaos versus control, or the artificial versus the natural, whether that be through color, so synthetic color versus more natural color, moments where the, the paintings feel as though there's, there's clusters of, of more organic elements versus more geometric aspects. In doing so, I'm really interested in ultimately creating a, a sense of disorientation in a, in a playful way that hopefully expands upon this idea of creating an unfathomable space. In Augury, as in my, my painting practice, I'm referencing the histories of abstraction, but I'm utilizing strategies of representation. So there's those, those elements to traditional landscape painting, foreground, middle ground, background, atmospheric space, te texture, variety of texture, scale, scale of the, the formal elements. These things I'm playing around with, but I'm translating them through an abstract language. And I think that that allows for some, some really dynamic opportunities to take place where I also want to create a little bit of confusion through those things where perhaps the background is shooting forward towards the surface of the painting or um, depending on how I'm dealing with a shape, it could perhaps carry simultaneously flatness and depth. That's another um, opposition that I'm really interested in, this idea of deep space versus flatness and having them coexist simultaneously within a work as well. The, um, the other thing that uh, that I think about a lot is points of entry. Ways that the viewer will potentially decide to enter and navigate the piece. And what's been really enjoyable for me is getting feedback from people who have collected my work and, and live with it, and on any given day might start to unravel the work or navigate journey through the painting from a different point of entry. So depending on their mood, depending on maybe how long they have with the work. They might start at the bottom left-hand corner one day, but then the next day they might decide to enter in and, and have that visual experience starting from the top right-hand corner. So I enjoy that there are those moments. I, I think of them a bit as anchors almost. There is there is that aspect where one might feel as though a, a certain mark or a certain gesture is reminiscent of the edge of a, of a wave or, or a ripple in water, perhaps a, something that's very reminiscent of the, the veins of a leaf. But the thing with abstraction is that given all the other elements and all that are happening around these moments, then they always get recontextualized into abstraction. So the paintings are always abstract first and foremost, and they'll always withhold from that, that potential, potential representational reading. And I think that that's playful as well. And I think that, that viewers, the feedback I've gotten is that viewers enjoy, in, enjoy those moments. But what I do is start a work, start a painting with a color that I maybe have not used predominantly or perhaps a color that isn't really speaking to me on that given day. And by doing that, it sets up a certain antagonistic relationship between myself and the piece. And I do approach abstract painting in a, in a way that one could consider quite traditional in the sense that I'm always responding to the previous mark. So it's, it's sort of this, this question and answer, this, this conversation of me, myself going back and forth with what's actually happening on the canvas. And from there, because I can't respond to these colors the way I've responded to different colors in the past, it forces me to engage with a level of inventiveness that ultimately, I believe, helps with the overall dynamism and, and perhaps the energy that gets captured in the final piece. So with Augury, I started out with this sort of awkward peachy tone, actually, which still, still glows through from the background, but which also has been predominantly eliminated in other zones of the work. And then there were some interesting foils that took place, color, colors that played foil to that peach. Uh, perhaps um, one might want to focus on there's the little mauve moment at, at the bottom. There's this kind of la lavender octagon, but it's kind of grayed, grayed lavender. That almost could play as a potential anchor before you get swept up into these, these rusty, more gestural, uh, deepened red tones that sort of flow 
throughout the left, the left bottom corner of the work. Another element that was really important to creating and developing the composition of this piece was that I was playing with some grayish greens in the top of the, of the piece, and in using tape, created this sort of inverted V form that, that also anchored one throughout these swirls that were more atmospheric, throughout these gestural moments that created this, this atmospheric perspective almost in the piece. And, and so those, those moments of angularity versus gesture tend to, to allow for some interesting visual tensions that I enjoy playing with as well.